Hi, today I have a quick project share for you and then a tutorial on how I made the project. This is a mini album that I have made using the Bow Bunny World Traveler Collection Pack. It has papers that are perfect for travels. So I picked this up at Tuesday morning a couple of months ago and I'm excited to show you what I made with it. So this is the album. It is a small album. It is four inches by six inches. It has a half inch spine. It has four pocket pages inside. It's a really nice album for a beginner, someone who hasn't made an album before, or just something quick that you want to put together to give for someone. I have made this as a birthday gift for a friend of mine who recently got a convertible and is going to take it out for the first time now that the weather has been getting nicer. And I thought this would be a really cute way for her to document her travels. So I have a wooden embellishment that says adventure is calling and I must go. And another embellishment here that says explore. These are also from Tuesday morning and I bought them in a package and I just thought they were really cute. It's held together by some twine. And when you open it up on the inside cover, what I did was create a road trip passport just to kind of give her some prompts about how she can use this. She's not a scrapbooker, so I just wanted to make sure this was as easy as possible. And I have a list of different things in the area that she can do as she takes the car out for a drive. So I put this in the front so she knows how to fill the rest of this out. So each page has a place for a photo where there's either a frame or a photo mat and these are all open at the top so then her photo will slide right down into it. And then there's a pocket page here and this has a tag inside of it and then it's got a journaling card here where she can journal and then place a photo. And then the back side has room for a photo and then if she wants she can journal down here as well. On the back side it's just blank. She can put a photo here. I think I might also put photo mats here so she knows what to do. And then again here there's another frame that she can slide a photo down and she can journal down here. Another photo mat with a frame and then a photo mat with some photo corners on the back. And then on the back of the page again it's just blank. And then this page has a large frame all the way on the page so she can put a larger photo slide it down in there and then a photo mat that has another journaling card where she can journal and place a photo and on the back just another place where she can place a photo and journal if she wants plain on the back again one of these large frames so it is open at the top that she can place a large photo on the page and then another tag with a photo mat and a frame on each of those pages. And then this back page is blank. And then the back cover, I didn't put anything either. So I figured she can add another photo, she can draw, or she can just leave it blank. And then the back is plain as well. So that's my mini passport album. If you are interested in making one, stay tuned for the tutorial and I'll show you step by step how. To get started, you first need to gather papers that you will need to make the pages from. For my album, I'm making four pages, so I have four different types of cardstock here. You can use plain cardstock and decorate it later if you want to, but I just use the pattern paper. And what I'm doing is I have them already cut to the size that I want, so my pages are four inches wide and I am scoring them so that they are six inches and then I left the top part of the paper on and I scored it at a half an inch so that I had a flap that I will then glue together in the next step. So once you have all of your pages, I have the glue now that I'm gluing the flap. So that little piece of paper at the top that's not the pattern, I'm putting glue on that so that I can make the pocket on each of the pages. Now that I have my pocket pages completed, the next step is to lay out some different items that you want to 
decorate the pages with. And here I am taking eight and a half by 11 pieces of cardstock and cutting them into the tags for the inside of the pocket. So each piece is five and a half by four and a quarter inch. And then I am taking a graphic 45 tag so that I can trace the top of the tag. And then I am cutting it out by hand. If you want a different shape tag, you can do that, or you can just leave them square photo mats as well. Once I have the first tag cut to the shape I want, I use that as a pattern to cut the other three tags. I think this is easier than having to trace the graphic 45 tag on each of them and redoing it all. The next step is to select the papers that you want to decorate the tags with. And I just chose some different papers and I'm cutting them down to four inch strips right now. And then I will be cutting them to the shape of the tag next. Make sure that you cut two pieces for each tag. So here you'll see that I have eight pieces because I have four tags. Next, I'll be cutting each of the decorative papers to the size of the tag, leaving just a little bit of extra room around the outside so you can see a bit of the tag above the decorative paper. So what I am doing is using the tag first as a guide and then I will trim it a little bit more to make sure that it is the right size. Now that all of my pages are cut, it's time to start gluing them to the front and the back of the tag. I have selected them in pairs that I think match well and I am decorating each tag individually.
Once you're done, you should have four tags in the four pocket pages. The next step is to place ephemera on the front and back of the tags if you choose to do so. You can decorate your tags however you want. I had these cute little photo frames that are travel themed as well that I thought decorated the fronts really cute and I thought it matched the paper collection. I also have a couple of journaling cards to fill in on places that I didn't have enough of the photo frames and I am leaving the tops of each of the frame open so that she can slide a photo down from the bottom when she adds her pictures to the album. For the journaling cards, I decided to score them at the top and the side of the cards just so that I could make a flap to glue it down so that she could lift the flap up and place a photo and journal underneath of it. Now that I have my mats and my pages done, I'm putting them in order based on which tags I think match the pages best. Next, we're going to cut the cover for the album. So I'm taking a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and I am trimming it down to six inches and leaving it on the 11 inch side. I'm also cutting one inch by six inch strips into hinges to Put the album together so because i have four pages i will need five hinges there will be three in the middle between the pages and then one on the front and back covers what i'm doing is scoring each hinge in the middle at a half an inch and then i am making them into the actual hinge Next, I'll be putting the hinges in the pages and I try my hinge first to make sure it's the right size. Mine was just a little bit too big, so I am cutting just a little bit off of the end of each one and I am placing glue only on the inside of the hinge and I am gluing it down into the pocket of the album of the first page. And then I will repeat the process on the inside of the hinge and the inside of the envelope, being really careful that I don't go over my, my score line so that my pages will stick together nicely. I'll repeat this process with all four pages.
it's time to add the cover to the album so i am taking the piece that is six inches by 11 inches and i am going to create the cover i am scoring the album at four and one eighth of an inch because my pages are four inches and i want the album covers to be slightly larger and i am taking my pages all together to see how thick of a spine i need and i decided on a half inch spine and that's what fits my pages. If you have more pages, you'll need to accommodate for them in the spine. And then you can cut off the excess so that you have a four and one eighth inch page for the back cover as well. Next, what I'm doing is I am gluing just the two flaps for the hinges and I am gluing them to the front and the back cover. Make sure that you do not put glue on the actual pages themselves, just on the ends of the hinges. Next, I'll be taking some of the decorative paper to decorate the front and back covers as well as the inside front cover and the inside back cover. Don't forget to cut a thin piece to go over the spine on the cover as well. Next, I will glue the decorative paper to the front and back cover, and then I'll glue the decorative papers on the inside and the front and back covers. I am going to add a closure using my crop dial and some twine. So I am measuring to center the holes that I will punch in the inside front and back cover to lace my twine through. If you don't want to do this step, you don't have to add a closure. You can also glue ribbon to your book underneath the decorative papers or on top of them, depending on how you want to decorate your book if you want a closure using ribbon. Now I will be decorating the front cover with just a few little embellishments. So I have these little wooden embellishments that are travel themed and I'm selecting two of them. They're pretty flat overall, so there's not a lot of bulk, but if you like bulk and you like those embellishments, feel free to put as many of them on the album as you choose. <laughs> 